we want 30% female agents. Well, I want 100% competent agents. This, this is not a game. It's like these surgeons, these medical schools now, DEI. You're being operated on, whether it's your heart, it's your kidney, it's brain, life and death operations. You don't want to hear that this person got the job because of X, Y, Z and not because of merit. The insanity of the Marxist left. It permeates throughout the management process, whether you're running a 7-Eleven or whether you're running the Secret Service. If merit is not the number one factor, then you get people who don't necessarily merit the job. Well, our folks here found a uh, computer-generated 3D visual visualization of the shot that was taken at President Trump. And it was from Sky News. We love Sky News Australia. We love Sky News Australia here. They're so solid. Now you'll say, well, why do we need that? I saw the real thing, but you didn't see this. They, they actually take the trajectory of the bullet. So you can see, we understand how close this was, but wait till you see this. I looked at it and I actually cringed and turned my head. Let's take a look at this, go. New footage has emerged revealing just how close Donald Trump came to death when he was shot at his Pennsylvania rally on July 13th. A computer-generated 3D visualization made by social media account Point Consciousness shows a bird's-eye view of the bullet skimming Donald Trump's ear right after the former president moved his head. The 3D graphic also shows the path the bullet would have taken if Trump did not tilt his head at the last second. I, they went fast. I want us to take another look at this. It goes right past his cheek. Could have hit him in the jaw, too. Hits the ear. This is frightening. Go slowly to the next... So you could see it very graphically. Now let's go back and look at what would have happened if he didn't turn his head. This is all real time, that's okay. Right, okay, right there. It would have blown off half his skull, right there. These are big bullets, they're not this. It would have blown through his head. God, and luck. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, um, what we know is that Donald Trump loves that graphic. I've never seen it. Other people have seen it on immigration, on the numbers coming across the border and so forth. What you may not know is he usually saves that for the end of his speech, the very end. But for some reason, he goes off the teleprompter, which he does often. He starts to talk about it. And then he says, well, let's take a look at this. You know, look at these numbers. These guys are getting better at it, you know, putting it up on the monitor and so forth. He does this in the pull. <laughs> now, what's very upsetting about this, though, is the more we learn, the more preposterous and outrageous this is. This is a tiny local police department. Are you telling me the United States Secret Service delegated to them authority for protection outside the protection zone, that tighter area. These people aren't used to any of this. It's one thing if you have them checking handbags and stuff like that. Number two, you have a counter sniper, a counter sniper, not just the sniper. You know what a counter sniper is there for? To kill other snipers. So if you have a counter sniper there, that counter sniper, that's his job to stay focused, to look for any other snipers or any other potential, you know, in the trees, on buildings and so forth. That's his job. He's not just looking around everywhere. He's the counter sniper. There's other snipers. They're not the counter snipers. They're focused on the podium and other ones focused on the audience. You have a counter sniper. And now we learn that they viewed that building as a vulnerable spot. And then we hear that for the local police, it was a, a launching off for special ops. Now, special ops, they have 20 cops. I don't know how much, you know, it's almost preposterous. You're going into there. You're the head of the Secret Service, or you're the person in charge of that particular detail that day. You know you're dealing with a, a township of 6,000 people with a small police force. You don't have to be a cop, ex-military, anything else to say, well, then why would you delegate it to them? 
because I don't think they did, to be perfectly honest with you. And then you've seen the video. You've seen the video of the people yelling and saying, there's a guy up there with a gun. He's up there, he's up there now with a rifle. Officer, officer, there's a guy up there with a, wouldn't you at least pull your pistol and I would do something. I mean, I'm just saying. And now the Secret Service are leaking like hell to try and cover their ass. And when I say Secret Service, I'm talking about whoever was involved in the decision making, not the soldiers who are carrying it out. Unless one of them did something they weren't supposed to do. But that building was left just like that. Now keep something in mind. This is a 20-year-old, right? Okay? He's not a trained assassin like the Islamo-Nazi regime in Iran or the fascist regime in Moscow or the communist regime in China or the Castro. He's not a trained assassin. So everybody's correctly wondering, well, how the hell did he get a ladder? How the hell did he get up there? How the hell did he go undetected? Well, he wasn't undetected. The number of people in the audience saw him. Uh, there's talk about a police officer eyeballed him and saw him, and then the police officer got out of the way without engaging. And, and that, in fact, the Secret Service had seen him 30 minutes before with a backpack and called it in. There's so much to know here, but I want to make something very, very clear. When Joe Biden says, we're going to have an independent investigation, number one, there was always going to be an independent investigation, whether Joe Biden called for one or not. Number two, this is his administration. Joe Biden takes responsibility for nothing. Nothing, nothing that he does. Well, Mark, why should he take responsibility for this? Well, maybe he shouldn't, but his wife should. What are you talking about? It's now reported in the New York Post that Joe Biden was responsible for the appointment of this woman to be head of the Secret Service, the director of the Secret Service, because she had worked with her closely for two or three years and she liked her. Before that, she worked at PepsiCo, head of security for a while. Before that, for 27 years, they say she was a Secret Service agent. But that, that doesn't mean because you're an agent that you have the management skills and so forth. So Jill Biden was responsible for this appointment. This is a D. E-I appointment by Joe Biden. And one of the focuses of this director of the Secret Service, and she's made it public, we want 30% female agents. Well, I want 100% competent agents. This, this is not a game. It's like these surgeons, these medical schools now, DEI. You're being operated on, whether it's your heart, it's your kidney, it's brain, life and death operations. You don't want to hear that this person got the job because of X, Y, Z and not because of merit. This is the, the insanity of the Marxist left. This is the insanity of it. It permeates throughout the management process, whether you're running a 7-Eleven or whether you're running the Secret Service. It is what it is. If merit is not the number one factor, then you get people who don't necessarily merit the job including her. There's just so many questions asked. For instance, now we know that the Islamo-Nazi regime in Iran, the week before, they had good information from a human asset that they were seeking to assassinate President Trump. Now, I heard somebody earlier today say, well, they've always wanted it. I know, but there's a heightened interest when you start to hear more chatter about it or somebody comes forward who's trusted to our intelligence services and our federal law enforcement and says, no, 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 this is what I know. Right? Now let me ask you a question. The Iranian regime has wanted to take out Pompeo and Bolton. They've wanted to take out O'Brien. They wanted to take out a gentleman by the name of Hooks who was very tough on Iran and was involved in getting rid of the, the Iran deal with President Trump. That we know they wanted to take out Trump, but now it's heightened. We know all this stuff. So why did we give tens of billions of dollars to Iran? Why did Biden lift sanctions on Iran? Why doesn't he reimpose sanctions on Iran for the 50th time? He should have, given the fact that we have now solid information that as of last week, they were targeting President Trump for assassination. Why does he keep attacking Netanyahu? You see... He talks about tamping down the rhetoric. They always lie. He treats Netanyahu. He dehumanizes Netanyahu the way he dehumanizes 
Trump, the way he dehumanized Bork, the way he dehumanized Clarence Thomas. This is what he is. This is what the man does. And he's back at it today. So we have this threat from Iran. And what's interesting to me is there's two issues here. One is as it relates to the protection by the Secret Service. But the other issue is we have a threat from Iran to assassinate our future president, presidential candidate, past president. What are we doing about it? You know, it wasn't that long ago when that was viewed as a declaration of war, that another country wanted to take out the president of the United States? It's all ho-hum. Well, you know, you know, did you get in heightened secret service? Wait a minute. We're funding Iran. We're negotiating with Iran behind closed doors. Iran has Israel surrounded. They're threatening to assassinate our president. They're within a wink of getting a nuclear weapon, and we're funding them? And the problem's Trump and the problem's Netanyahu? You see the insanity? For all this and much more, sign up for Levin TV.